Since I found security video of a police officer entering my property unlawfully, I found myself on a path of ongoing interesting events. On March 19th, 2018, I was at work and I had an out-of-town guest staying at my house. There was no car and nothing to indicate anyone was home. My friend stepped outside for a smoke and was surprised to see a man in a hang glider. It had a small motor flying around my yard. She said it barely made any noise at all, and it was weird because he approached from the back, but then dropped down to the ground as he entered the yard. She thought he was going to crash, but he stayed within the trees lower than the tree line of my yard before going out to the road, then entering again through my driveway, coming close enough she could have touched his feet as he flew all the way along the driveway before rising again and flying off in the direction he had come. He wore a helmet, or she may have been able to identify him. He was that close. He circled my house, then flew off. She's pretty sure he saw her too. I was able to pull showing what looks like a guy hanging from a bag of some sort, but the camera angle isn't high enough to capture the yellow glider and motor my friend described. My son wondered if it might be the same guy he saw flying around him at Les Schwab a week prior. He had told me about it then, thought it was very cool, but what is it doing flying through my yard today? I found a frame of him in the air on my security camera, but it's poor quality, just enough to confirm that he was actually there and my friend had not imagined it. This was before he entered my yard, where he dropped to just above the clubhouse you see there. The one on the left is a close-up of the left top corner where the cap camera captured his arrival. Not intended to identify, of course, just confirm what my friend saw. In the time between the glider and this incident, my friend got in her car and parked it in my driveway. On March 28, 2018, this strange white handprint was found on the dashboard of her car. She had been staying with me for a few days. She went out to her car to find this white substance near the lock on the driver's side door, dismissing it as bird droppings. When she climbed inside the car and sat down, she noticed this paw print on her dashboard. It looks like the same substance that was on the door. Nothing was missing or stolen from the car. Recreating the placement of the print, it appeared to be where someone might put their hand to brace themselves to grab something off the dash while keeping themselves partly outside of the car. Could it have been to remove the piece of paper that was covering the VIN number while possibly snapping a photo of the VIN through the windshield? Uh, why would anyone do that? But then again, why would anyone leave a white paw print on the dash? My invited house guest went out to her car this morning and discovered there had been a second visitor sometime during the night. Visitor number two had pulled the car dashboard in my guest's car apart, leaving a big hole in it. We tried to push it back together, but it wouldn't budge. We wonder if maybe the second visitor was the same one who left the white palm print the night before. April 7, 2018. Last week, I was doing some deep cleaning and rearranging at my house. Thinking they will never be used again, I removed some old, landline telephone jacks. The main living area jack had a short wire connecting two terminals that looked different from the other jacks I removed from the other rooms. I took some pictures of it. 
thinking I might look more into it later. You can see the wire is wrapped in a figure eight tightly around the plate. This extra wire, not in the ja other jacks that I removed, is tightly wrapped around to the other side of the plate and completes a circuit between the two connection screws. The other jacks in the house just had one wire coming from each of the two screws. Certainly different, but I'm used to weird things around here, so I didn't put a whole lot into it because I haven't had a landline for so many years. I snapped a couple of photos thinking I might check it into it more later. Then forgot all about it until this morning when I looked out my window and saw my phone service box. It was wide open. I haven't had a landline telephone since before 2007. It's now 2018. Maybe it's just me, but I think it's interesting that the service box is opened a few days after I removed the phone jacks inside my home. After discovering my phone service box had been tampered with, a few days after I had removed all the phone jacks from my house, I was talking about it with my house guest. My visiting friend was seeing firsthand some pretty strange occurrences happening at my house, from paragliders circling the yard to white fingerprints on her dashboard. She was becoming concerned about what was going on. As we discussed why or how the phone box may have been opened, I mentioned that one of my dogs had wakened me around 2 a.m. that morning. My dog was shivering, which is something he usually does when he sees someone he's afraid of. My bed was shaking so much it woke me up. I thought it was odd that the dog was shivering because no one else was in my room. I figured it was his shivering that was shaking my bed, and I put him out of my room, but my bed continued to shake like a low hum or vibration. I had had this experience a few other times recently, and I would describe it as what a diesel truck parked and running outside might feel like. My visitor told me she too had been awakened after just 2 a.m. to a vibrating bed. She thought it was an earthquake and made a note to herself to check the morning news to see where it had hit. This shared experience, even though we had been sleeping in opposite ends of the house, made us turn to the security footage. I didn't have a camera directed at the phone box, but you can see what appears to be human-shaped shadows. There were two of them, moving in and out of my guest's car that night, around the same time we both had been awakened by the shaking. We went outside to look at her car. You can see from the photo that her dash is pulled out more than before, leaving an even bigger gap extending over to the passenger side of the car and you can see the second manufacturer notch being exposed. She said it looks like there were things moved around in the back seat and the contents of a bag was strewn across the floorboard. She doesn't think anything was taken. We will always wonder what could have made the whole house vibrate. Well you can see a snapshot I pulled from the security video. I outlined one of the shadows that we see moving around inside the car when it briefly took an upright position. It's just shadows, but it looks like two people are moving around outside and inside the car. These shadows appeared around 2 a.m. and continued being active for about 40 minutes. If you're having any electrical problems with your car and don't have a good mechanic or the cash to get it repaired, just park it in my driveway for a night. It might be a trade-off, though, because apparently something needs to get broken to get something else fixed. After my friend had her dashboard ripped out while it was parked in my driveway one night, all of her electrical circuits mysteriously started working again. That's right. She's beside herself, not knowing whether to be mad about the dash or glad that the cigarette lighter is suddenly heating up. She says it's hard to know how to feel when the dash has a big gaping hole in it that wasn't there before she parked it. But hey, <laughs> there is a door chime, ding, 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 and a door ajar light on her dash when the door is open that she has not seen in years. I guess if you're in need of some free repairs to your car's electrical system and willing to risk a little damage to the hardware to get it, 
bring it on over. <laughs>